Yeah, we're probably with KJ. We back with another reaction video. No cat today. We got Angry Mob outside McDonald's. For the video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and we're gonna the next. We're gonna shoot into no cap, bro. What's up, guys? So this story takes Road to 200. I mean, I mean, on the red channel, road to 400 on the our main channel, road to 100 on the third channel. And you guys ever have one of those dreams that makes no sense at all? They're the most random things are happening. Um, not really. Thing. How did my brain even come up with that? Because what went down at this McDonald's on this particular night reminds me of that. And as you'll see, there's really no satisfying ending to any of this. Just a lot of unusual things that went down one after the other that left me confused and still don't really make any sense when I think about it. So it was a Saturday night and I was just chilling uh -huh. playing Xbox with a friend and we were bored. We were trying to find something to do, but we couldn't find anything at all. And it got to be kind of late. And since there was nothing else to do, we decided to go grab some food. I think the only food I had there in my dorm was probably half a bag of chips, a pop tart and like a can of Red Bull. So there is definitely nothing there I had that we could eat. And by 11 o'clock at night, the food options that were actually within walking distance started to go down real quick as it got later and later. But my go-to at this time of the night was always McDonald's. First of all, because it was cheap, you can get a lot of food for a little money, but mainly because they used to have this one drink there that I think I was actually addicted to. This drink, first of all, was God tier. It was like this chocolate chip frozen coffee thing. That I never heard of that. Way closer to a milkshake after all the sugar and whatever stuff they put in it. But however they made it, I used to go to McDonald's all the time to get this thing. And this is unrelated to the story, but one day, a few months later, they freaking got rid of it. One day I pull up to McDonald's and they're like, oh yeah, that? We got rid of that. I was like, you did what now? So Ronald, if you're out there and you see this, please bring it back. Help your boy out. But this takes place before those dark times began. So I was really trying to get that drink, get a cheap meal to go with it. So I asked Justin if he's down to get some McDonald's. And since there was nothing else to do anyways, he's like, sure, why not? Let's go. So we start walking down the street to the McDonald's. And a little background on this McDonald's, there was a lot of homeless people, a lot of crackheads in that area. And there would often be groups of them that hung around outside that McDonald's. And just in that area in general, usually they would just be sitting sitting on the curb or sleeping on the tables or something it was never really a big deal so like i said it was around 11 at night but this mcdonald's didn't close until midnight and the drive mcdonald's close for hours uh, okay yeah normally how that's how to be had gone there plenty of nights in the past and this mcdonald's was always popping so i immediately knew something was off when we were walking on the street up to it and it looked pretty much empty i think i just saw a few people in the corner and that was it so that was kind of strange right off the bat and sure enough when we walked up to the door and tried it it was locked I'm checking the sign on the door that definitely says open until midnight every night. The strange thing was, I could see a group of people through the door kind of moving yo, around. This was yo, a pretty big McDonald's. Yo, hold on, bro. Why the fuck? The fact that they got to put a no strap fucking thing on the yo, that nigga got to live in a 30 ass place, bro. Was, I could see That's fucking crazy. People through the door I've never seen that around. before. This was a pretty big McDonald's. They were all the way across the other side of the building. So they were kind of behind some trash cans and walls. So I couldn't really see them. But I just kind of assumed they must have been workers, right? If the whole inside was locked. Yeah. But the drive through was at least 24 hours. So we decided, whatever. Let's just try and walk through the drive through and we can take it somewhere else to eat. So we straight up walk up to the drive through speaker and it's dead quiet. We're like, hello, hello, can we order? Tapping on it, but nobody is answering. And at this point, I don't know if they're just ignoring us, but a car pulled up behind. So we step back and start watching this car to see if they're able to order or if they just get ignored too, which they did. They sat there for a few minutes and then just drove off. The thing is, as I started to look through the drive through windows, we can see workers moving around in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So we walk up to the windows to see if we can get somebody to take our order at this 24-hour drive through And there's this girl moving around by the register who I swear could see us outside the window trying to get her attention. But she was just acting like we weren't there. So we were like, you That's know what? fucking crazy. We were just about to walk away and go find somewhere else to eat. When we heard these really high-pitched, like, shrieks coming from around the corner. And this is when the situation just starts to devolve into just chaos. So after I heard this shriek, I'm like, well, what the? And there was this moment of silence. And then all of a sudden, this group of like these three sorority girls come what is this? out from around the corner. They're like stumbling along, literally tripping over themselves. It was very chaotic. But they start coming towards us. And one of them is like, oh my gosh, they didn't take our order. And I could tell all three of them were definitely 100% <laughs> intoxicated. Definitely. They were walking and being so loud for no reason. But I'm like, yeah, I don't know what's going on. There's workers in there, but I think they're just ignoring us for some reason. And then the same girl is like, oh my gosh, how dare they? Let me see. 
and she kind of nudges her way past us so she can look inside the window and as soon as she noticed the lady inside she starts yelling at her trying to get her attention but the lady just continues to act like none of us what is going on at this point maybe it's a robot five people outside your drive through how are you just gonna ignore them all and then the girl decided to take it up a level and starts slamming her hands on the glass of the drive through i'm thinking okay all right, right here's a little bit excessive but her friends are just standing there like this is a completely sane thing to be doing and then the worker, right? She walks over to the window. The girl is still slamming on the glass. I'm thinking, oh, she's about to finally say something. But no, she walks up to it and just starts spraying and wiping it down like there isn't a drunk sorority girl. Yeah, that got, yo, that got to be a fucking NPC or some shit, bro. Play out like, what the fuck? Pretend to act oblivious to that. It was just really strange. And that's when I remember there was those people I had thought I'd seen earlier when we first walked up to the other door. So right around the corner from the drive through there was another door. So I go look inside. And you remember how I said there would typically be a lot of homeless people around the area? Yeah. There was this group of like six clearly homeless people sitting inside. There was one lady just lying on the floor. But there's just this group of them just chilling. Yo, why are you still? I would have went home by now, bro. Inside the restaurant. But what is this group doing inside a locked McDonald's that's supposed to be unlocked and open for business? And what is homegirl doing just chilling on the floor? And then one of the other two sorority girls notices this and she gets heated. I mean, I get it. You're a little drunk. You're overreacting. But still, she started getting really heated over it. So much so that now she starts yelling at another different employee through the door. She's like, hey, can you open up? Can you let us in? How are you going to let them in there but not us? <laughs> Yo. Girl, Justin and I we were basically over the whole thing. And right before we were just about to leave again, another group of these four random kids I've never seen before walk around from the other corner and i don't know if they came from a party or what because they were also moving around a little tipsy looking a little smashed but there were three entrances to this restaurant and they said they already tried the other two doors and asked that this one is also locked so i'm like yeah this one is too i think they just closed early or something one of them goes well who are they why does it look like there's a bunch of homeless people inside and i'm like yeah i was honestly wondering the same thing and one of the guys moves over to the window and starts pounding on the window, also trying to get the attention of a worker. I was just in there sweeping the floor. I'm like, bro, chill. He's like, no, I can't let them ignore us like that. And <laughs> pounding on the window. Yo, because some of you guys be so fucking... People that have no chill right now. And the employees all continued to act like everything was normal. Like there wasn't a girl pounding on their drive through Like there wasn't a girl yelling through their door. Another dude beating on your window. I mean, by now, an actual mob has started to form outside your restaurant. You'd think they'd at least come out to try to put a stop to the shenanigans that were going on. Or at least, you know, explain why they were closed. Not just continue nonchalantly sweeping the floors. But it still gets more random. At this point, one of the homeless people got up from the table, walked over to the door, and didn't open it, didn't try to say something through the door. Nah, he started throwing up this sign language. <laughs> what the fuck? To us like that. I'm not gonna lie, this man had some crazy hand motions going. I mean, I'm just gonna assume it was sign language. I don't know. He could have been throwing around gang signs for all I know. He was also doing a lot of pointing. Obviously, we have no idea what he's trying to tell us. And I think he got that too. And eventually he's like, forget these people. And just went and sat back down. And keep in mind, during all of this, this girl is still doing her thing over there. Now, there was this trash can right on the inside of the door. And if what had gone down in the last five minutes wasn't random and bizarre enough, probably about 30 seconds after a sign language man sat back down, out from the corner of the trash can pops this, like, three-year-old What kid. the I'm fuck? Like, oh, where did the baby come from all of a sudden? I mean, is he the kid of someone in there? He just appeared literally out of nowhere from behind this trash can, and he was... This gotta be a fucking dream or some shit. Pants, ...just staring at us. And then the girl has the genius idea to now stop yelling at the workers and people at the table and now try to get this toddler to open up the door for us from the inside. I'm like, what is happening? Like, am I actually dreaming this situation? Yo, this is fucking this like... Is too strange to be a real life event. So this girl starts trying to hold a conversation with this baby. She's saying like, come on, come on, push the handle, open the door for us. Now, obviously, he was way too small to actually be able to reach up high enough to push it open. I guess she just didn't think of that. And neither did the other dudes because a couple of them joined in. Oh, my God, bro. Yo, there is no way this is real. 
and I swear he low key understood what was going on because he would step forward and reach his hand up like he was gonna try and push the door but then would retract his hand and step back almost as if he was taunting that nigga ain't got no fucking socks on nigga what the fuck is actually interacting with this group of drunk college students and is low key understanding what they want him to do he would reach his hand up and they'd be like oh he'd pull it back down they'd be like oh <laughs> yo what the fuck bro and that went on for like yo this minutes I'm just wondering whose kid is this? Is this their kid? But after a couple minutes, sadly, he retreated back behind the trash can, and with that, we lost our last hope of ever getting inside this McDonald's. And then I look behind me. Now all of a sudden, amidst all of this chaos, the other girl and one of the other guys are flirting with each other in the middle of all of this. The dude's talking about, yeah, let me get your Snapchat. I'm like, bro, your friends are trying to talk to a baby and your friend has been banging on the drive through window glass for at least four minutes in a row by now. But shoot, y'all do your thing, I guess. And I didn't mention this part earlier. Hey, no fucking way, bro. All of this, this random other guy joined us too. I'm not exactly sure when. I just kind of noticed him all of a sudden. And he was just chilling in the back the entire time. Just kind of watching the show. Trying to see what's going on. I guess his actual crackhead was watching all this crackhead behavior. Rudy <laughs> yeah, nah, that's away. fucking crazy. So there's five things going on at once. This and this and this and this. And the guy sweeping from the inside finally decides to stop ignoring us. And he walks up to the door and yells through the glass. We're closed. Go away. And then turns around and leaves. <laughs> what? The fuck? said that from the beginning when we were way back at this stage or this stage or literally any of the other many opportunities that you had to tell us that and all of this chaos could have been avoided he was really salty about it too i mean i understand why but when he said that that set the one girl off again even more so than she already was and she's like you know what i don't want to eat here anyways your floors are dirty and your beef is fake i'm going to taco bell like wow got him good there and also i'm pretty sure dirty floors and fake beef applies equally to taco bell as it does that's what i was about to say nigga what the fuck could have come up with a better insult but regardless from there the entire group Except the crackhead, he stayed behind. But the rest of all 10 of us, or however many, left the McDonald's and just walked over to this Taco Bell. Which is cool, it just left me with a lot of questions about really everything I just saw happen that I will probably never have an answer to. Hey, but from Generation, which is like a 